quasars are mysterious astronomical objects that are considered some of the brightest and most energetic objects known in the universe. Quasars are characterized by intense energy releases that occur around supermassive black holes, usually found at the centers of galaxies. Quasars were discovered during radio astronomy studies in the early 1960s. They were initially detected as sources that strongly emit radio waves. However, when viewed with optical telescopes, it was noticed that they did not resemble the cores of normal galaxies. Instead, they were observed as objects that appeared quite bright, compact and distant. Quasars are known as objects with a particularly high redshift. Redshift refers to the increase in wavelength of light as it reaches the observer from a receding source. This is used to determine the distance of the object in the universe. Quasars help us look into the early universe thanks to these high redshift values. Today, the main feature of quasars is the tremendous energy release from the disks formed by supermassive black holes as they swallow the surrounding matter. This release of energy can span a wide spectrum of the electromagnetic spectrum, meaning it can range from radio waves to visible light, X-rays and gamma rays. Quasars are these energy sources found in the cores of distant galaxies and represent important energy production centers in the universe. They are considered some of the brightest and most energetic objects known in the universe. Their discovery and understanding represent a major milestone in the history of astronomy. The discovery of quasars took place in the second half of the 20th century and was an important step in understanding the mysteries of the depths of the universe of quasars came as a result of work in the field of radio astronomy. In the early 1960s, radio telescopes began scanning the sky to detect different radio sources. However, some sources were much brighter and more complex than other radio sources. In 1963, British astronomer Cyril Hazard examined a radio source called 3C48 and determined that this source was quite distant compared to normal galaxies. This distance showed that 3C48 had a very high redshift. Redshift is a concept used to determine whether light is moving from its source towards the observer. Astronomers can calculate the amount of redshift of an object by examining the wavelength of the light they observe. This concept was used to estimate the distances of 3C48 in similar sources. The results showed that these radio sources are located in distant galaxies and have very large distances. This meant that the sources were quite bright and energetic. Later, observations with optical telescopes revealed that these distant radio sources did not resemble the nuclei of normal galaxies. Observers noticed that these sources were incredibly bright and compact. In 1964, Caltech astronomers discovered Martin Schmidt and Donald Matthews described these objects using the term quasar. The term quasar means quasi-stellar radio. It is an abbreviation for source and indicates that these sources are star-like radio sources. Of quasars has helped us understand the consequences of the Big Bang by shedding light on the distant and early stages of the universe. It also allowed us to understand the energy present in the universe and the matter around supermassive black holes. Quasars added a new dimension to astronomy and offered scientists the opportunity to understand the mysteries of the universe more deeply. Quasars are some of the brightest and most energetic astronomical objects in the universe and are often found at the centers of very distant galaxies. This extraordinary brightness and energy most likely results from the interactions of disks of matter orbiting supermassive black holes. Supermassive black holes underlie quasars. These black holes are gigantic black holes with masses as large as millions or even billions of sun masses. These black holes are located at the centers of galaxies and are most likely formed as a result of the evolutionary processes of galaxies. Accretion disk is formed when materials such as gas and dust revolving around the supermassive black holes at the centers of galaxies slowly flow towards the gravity of the black hole. This disk of material spirals around the supermassive black hole. 
Supermassive black hole at the center of the galaxy heats up and reaches high energy levels through various physical processes. One of these processes is events such as supernova explosions. Intense winds resulting from the explosion of stars at the end of their lives can cause matter to flow into the inner regions of the disk. The inner regions of the material disk can experience extremely high temperatures and pressures due to energy-releasing events such as supernova explosions. This high temperature and pressure allows matter to condense and rise to high energy levels. As the matter, which condenses and heats up in the inner regions of the matter disk revolving around the supermassive black hole, falls towards the black hole under the influence of gravity, large amounts of energy are released. This energy is radiated into space in the form of electromagnetic radiation. These processes, which reach very high energy levels, constitute the main source of the brightness and energy of quasars. The disk of dense matter rotating around the supermassive black hole causes a wide range of electromagnetic radiation to be emitted. This radiation can be across a wide spectrum ranging from visible light to ultraviolet, X-rays and even gamma rays. Quasars are bright and energetic astronomical objects frequently seen in the early universe. This brightness and energy arise as a result of the interactions of disks of matter orbiting the supermassive black holes at the centers of quasars. Supermassive black holes are huge black holes that have millions or even billions of solar masses. The gravitational force of black holes is so great that it pulls the matter around them towards itself. This gravity causes matter to flow towards the black hole. If this flow is fast and intense, an accretion disk forms around it. Matter in the inner regions of this disk reaches high temperatures and pressures as it falls into the supermassive black hole of quasars is produced by matter within the accretion disk orbiting the supermassive black hole at the center. This energy is released through various mechanisms. As matter approaches the black hole, it accelerates and its kinetic energy increases. As the matter reaches closer areas, its speed increases and its potential energy turns into kinetic energy. Energy is released during this transformation. The material rotates within the accretion disk. The slowing down and heating of the substance due to this friction leads to the release of thermal energy. If there are magnetic fields within the matter disk, the matter moves depending on the magnetic field lines. Energy is released in this interaction. Magnetic fields can accelerate and manipulate matter. Intense radiation is produced due to high temperatures within the material disk. This radiation acts on the matter and removes it, thus ensuring a balanced state. This process is based on the principle that energy-carrying photons react to the pressure around the substance. As a result of the interaction of these mechanisms, quasars shine by emitting light and radiation at high energy levels in a wide electromagnetic spectrum. This light and radiation allows us to observe quasars in distant galaxies and obtain information about the early universe. Active galactic nuclei are bright and energetic regions located at the centers of galaxies. This region is generally fed by disks of matter orbiting supermassive black holes and matter flowing towards these disks. Different astronomical methods are used to detect and observe active galactic nuclei. Active galactic nuclei are usually located at the center of a normal galaxy and can therefore be detected by differences in brightness under visible light. The central region of active galactic nuclei is generally brighter than other galactic regions. Spectroscopic observations are used to study the properties of active galactic nuclei in more detail. Active galactic nuclei often have distinct emission patterns in their spectra. They show lines. For example, characteristic emission lines such as the hydrogen alpha line indicate the presence of active galactic nuclei. Active galactic nuclei can also emit significant radiation in radio waves. Radio telescopes are used to detect these radio waves. Radio waves can indicate the effects of streams of matter emitted from supermassive black holes, which are often found at the centers of active galactic nuclei. 
Observations made with radio telescopes show the effects of matter streams and jets originating from supermassive black holes at the centers of active galactic nuclei. Jets provide the appearance of radiation caused by high-speed particles that are created as a result of the flow of matter directed toward space. X-ray and gamma-ray observations are used to detect high-energy radiation from active galactic nuclei. Such observations could reveal the effects of condensed matter disks and flows at the centers of active galactic nuclei. X-ray and gamma-ray observations are used to detect high energy levels of radiation from active galactic nuclei. Such observations show the effects of condensed matter disks and flows around central supermassive black holes. It is possible to observe the radiation generated by the impact of high-energy particles in these regions. Disks and streams of matter around active galactic NUCLEIES are generally visible in the ultraviolet and infrared it can also emit significant radiation at different wavelengths. Such observations allow us to study the effects of hot and dense matter in the central region of active galactic nucleus. Emission line are used to study the motions of hydrogen gas around active galactic nucleos. These observations can reveal matter flows and movements. All these different observation methods help us understand the existence and properties of active galactic nucleus. Active Galactic NUCLEOS provide important information about the early universe and contribute to our understanding of topics such as galaxy evolution and the role of supermassive black holes. The time period called the early stages of the universe includes the period between approximately 380,000 years and the first million years after the Big Bang. This is the period when the structure of the universe was formed and the first galaxies and stars emerge. Early stage quasars are found at the centers of young, dense galaxies. These quasars form as a result of gas and dust flowing around supermassive black holes, accumulating over billions of years. Quasars provide important clues about the early stages of the universe. These bright objects help us study and understand the youth of the universe. Because when we observe distant quasars, we are looking into the distant past. These observations contribute to our understanding of the structures at the beginning of the universe, galaxy formation, and the first stars. Quasars are important celestial bodies that play an important role in cosmological research and are associated with fundamental issues such as the expansion of the universe, dark matter and dark energy. Quasars are objects often found at the centers of distant galaxies and are spread over great distances. Therefore, the light of these quasars is red-shifted due to the expansion of receding galaxies. The redshift value expresses the distance and expansion rate of an object. The relationship, called Hubble's Law, helps us understand the expansion of the universe by measuring the redshift values of quasars and their distances through it. Quasars emit bright, energetic radiation originating from disks of matter orbiting supermassive black holes at the centers of galaxies. However, the luminosity of some quasars requires more energy than is required to explain this radiation. This suggests that there are physical components around these quasars that are not yet fully understood, such as dark matter and dark energy. Measuring the distances and redshifts of quasars allows us to understand the expansion of the universe. These data express the expansion rate of the universe in the past and today. This information is used to develop cosmological models and understand the past, present and future state of the universe. Some cosmologists have conducted dark matter mapping studies using the effect of quasars light on dark matter and expansion quasars have been observed to act as lenses that change the density of dark matter. Such interactions can be used to map dark matter distribution. Quasars now. 3C273 is a bright astronomical object located in the constellation Virgo and considered the first of the quasars, first identified in 1963. It is approximately 2.44 billion light years away. This indicates that quasars belong to the distant past of the early universe and have large redshifts. The redshift value is quite high. 
the redshift value is expressed as 0.158. This statement is an indication that 3C273 is moving away from our galaxy and the universe is expanding. It is also a very bright quasar. It has a high luminosity in visible light, which is associated with the bright radiation generated by the flow of matter around the supermassive black hole at the center of the quasar. 3C273 was a turning point in the discovery of quasars and raised awareness in astronomy about the size of the universe and its distant past. This object is an important sample used to study the properties of the early universe and understand the expansion of the universe. Tun 618 is an astronomical object found in the early universe and is a very bright quasar. It is a distant quasar and its redshift is quite high. The redshift value was estimated at 2.005. This statement indicates that the object belongs to a great distance and therefore to the early universe. It is a very bright quasar. Its brightness is the result of intense radiation from the disk of matter around the supermassive black hole at the center of the object. This supermassive black hole intensely attracts matter around it and produces brightness. Tun 618 stands out with its very high energy levels and brightness. Astronomers try to obtain information about the early universe by examining bright and distant quasars such as Tun 618. These objects provide important clues about the youth of the universe. PKS 1830-211 is an astronomical object known as a distant quasar. It was first detected by the Parkes Radio Telescope in Australia in 1992. Coordinates 18 hours 33 minutes 39 seconds right turn hour and minus 21 degrees 0 3 minutes 39 seconds is the downswing degree. It is a very distant quasar and has a high redshift. The redshift value is estimated at 2.5. This indicates that the object is at a great distance and therefore belongs to the early universe. It is a bright radio source but can also be studied at optical wavelengths. Therefore, examining its optical spectrum helps us better understand the distance and properties of the object. It is an example of a gravitational lens whose light has been observed to bend and produce elevated brightness levels as it passes in front of a large galaxy. This effect occurs when the light of the background object is bent by the objects in front of it. It is also used by astrophysicists in molecular observations. Interactions between molecular gas clouds and the quasar are studied by analyzing the radiation of this quasar. Distant and bright quasars such as PKS 1830-211 help us learn about the early universe and are used to test the accuracy of cosmological models. The gravitational lens effect is used as an important tool in examining the structures around such objects. In this documentary, we met quasars and discovered these mysterious phenomena deep in the universe. When we come to the end of our documentary, we feel the peace of mind of having been fascinated by what we saw, deepened by what we thought, and left a small trace in the limitless complexity of the universe. Quasars, these gigantic sources of energy traveling at the speed of light, offer us the key to a great secret about how the universe works. Trying to unravel their nature means pushing the boundaries of science and our desire for discovery. We also thank you, our viewers. We are grateful for you accompanying us in this documentary.